and welcome back to another episode of Over the Glass. I am your host, Ness. And I'm Jay. Also host. <laughs> host two today. Um, we're excited because the Sharks keep coming up with some some little tidbits of good news throughout this offseason for them. Will Smith has officially signed his entry-level contract with the San Jose Sharks. I'm assuming he will be making the team, but let's not get our hopes up. Like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. He, um, everyone's like, or at least him, I think he was interviewed and was like, uh, I hope I make the big club, but he's still willing to play for the CUDA if not. So be interesting. They, they, he posted a hype video on his Instagram. I'm excited. <laughs> he got me hyped. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it definitely is one of those um, those things we were anticipating that this would be a little bit of like a chain reaction um, with his fellow line mates over at, at Boston College. I haven't seen them come out with any news, but one of the things that I was seeing all season was like, because of their chemistry and how um, not only were they first first line and first power uh, the first power play unit um, throughout the season at at BC, but if one of them were to go pro, it kind of seemed like it would um, perhaps influence the other two to to do the same. So I'm interested to see if that actually. Um, happens and then in addition for us uh, I'm hoping that we have some more exciting off-season signings on the veteran level to potentially if Will Smith does make the big club out of training camp that he has sufficient support around him um, because definitely a concern is these these young kids trying to to carry the ship before they're they're quite ready, uh, but I I'm pretty sure Mike Greer's got that kind of like at the forefront of his of his of what he plans to do in this off season. Yeah, I feel I feel like I can really trust Greer <laughs> with all the moves that he's made. I feel like he's pretty level headed and does it try to do anything too crazy or too risky knowing exactly the state of the team right now and like where it is that we need to go so i don't know and the fact that he let david quinn go which i yeah. said in the previous episode that like i was like that was more shocking to me than what happened with the hurdle trade but it is in a way like comforting to know that he's, he's willing to <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you know, like, I value you, you're, you know, a, a friend of mine and everything, but if it's not Bestie. working, he's able to separate the personal with the professional, and he's like, we've yeah. got to go in a different direction, and I'm sure David Quinn, you know, they sat down and probably, you know, he understands what what needed to happen, whatever the case may have been, we've already kind of discussed our thoughts on that, um, and then with this upcoming draft, like we know that the Sharks are very likely to take Macklin Celebrini. And if like in terms of who was going to make it out of these like young kids that we got coming up, uh, who was going to make the decision to come up to potentially play at the NHL level um, this upcoming season, like Macklin was definitely a, a at the top of that list. And then Will Smith. So the fact that Will Smith is like, yep, I'm ready. Like, it just feels like, like Macklin's like bound to sign to, mm -hmm. to, you know, try to make the big club. Um, I don't know about so you. When I was watching his, uh, what? <laughs> it just, it gets me so excited thinking about all these young guys, like really talented young guys playing on the team next year potentially it it's definitely the start of much more exciting things to come like we've seen all these other you know with like Quentin Musty and 
Luca Cognoni, like he just made the the All Star team for, mm-hmm. um, what is that junior Canadian C- um, hockey league? Is it? I don't remember. The CHL is that what the C stands for? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's like all like there's all these guys that are um, having really good seasons, and um, like I I'm hoping that it's only going to get better for them. Um, but when I was watching Will Smith's um, media, whatever you call it, he was getting like they were doing a good job of being like, you know, not to take away from your moment. This is your day. But everyone wants to talk about the fact that the Sharks are, you know, most likely going to take uh, Celebrini. And he want you know, people wanted to know like his thoughts because it was like. The, the rivalry between, you know, BC and BU, the fact that they both went to like the Frozen Four. And so, you know, he like he has experience with getting to see Celebrini play like firsthand. And I was joking that what <laughs> and I don't have any sources. I'm not trying to start any rumors, but like what if Will Smith like actually doesn't like Macklin? <laughs> And he's got to say all this nice stuff about him, right? Because he is, you know, he's going to most likely be taken first overall. So he knows he's got talent and whatever. And I think, I don't know what it's like to be a pro, but it's like up until this year before we got this draft pick, like Will Smith was like at the top of our prospect pool, right? And now... So Rini is potentially going to be the, the number one that everyone's talking about. Like uh, he's probably going to be on like whatever uh, promotional stuff. Like he's the new poster boy for the Sharks. Even though he hasn't been drafted yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm sure Smith is being professional about it. And I don't know what it's like to be in his shoes, but the fact that they're like asking him about it, even during like his, his day of signing and he's got to say all this nice stuff about Celebrini. I was just thinking like, Oh, the drama of like, he doesn't actually like him. He's like, man, I hate this guy. Like even before all this, it's like, maybe like, you know, maybe the, the matchups that they had during, um, their, um, their NCAA run and whatever is like maybe like he just didn't like people over at over at BU and now he's got to say all this nice stuff about Celebrini and he's like ah oh, man now I gotta have to share a locker room with him, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure is not the case. I'm sure they're all excited to be surrounded by uh, the fact that they're all gonna have an opportunity to be the the core the new. Um, face and the future of the sharks and whatever so i'm sure it's all great it just seemed like every other question was how excited are you about like potentially playing with celebrini and it's like (laughs) what i thought you were gonna ask me about me (laughs) you're like congrats but like the real question is how cool is it that you're potentially gonna play with celebrini it's like uh yeah (laughs) Great, it's great. Yeah, um, he's another awesome, thing I, think, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> haven't really met yet, but uh, another thing that I kind of am finding fun that I'm enjoying is that he picked his number for the Sharks, which we kind of already knew, but I guess now it's official since he signed. Um, he'll be wearing number two, which is normally a number that defensemen wear, apparently. I don't know how these number thing goes, numbers thing go, but... <clears throat> I would get his jersey. <laughs> I like number two. That used to be my number when I played sports in high school. It's a it's it's a small number. His, he has a small name. Fits perfectly. Smith too. Is aesthetically pleasing to you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's like I'm so like optimistically cautious. No, cautiously optimistic. Other way around. Cautiously optimistic about new guys coming in onto the team because it's like yeah they're talented how exciting but then also i don't want to set myself up for disappointment later down the line when these like bigger issues come come along Mm. you know so i'm Mm -hmm. like 
Yes. Did you see the reason why he wears number two? I think I saw some. I skimmed it. I don't. I don't remember. I had so apparently, Brian Leach was his favorite. Okay. Yes. Player. And when I read that, I immediately went to see how old, when was Smith born and when did Brian Leach play? <laughs> and like, he was born like the year after. So I'm just curious how that happened. Like he must have, his family must be like Rangers fans or something. And like he was, he was, must have seen old clips or or maybe you know leech has made appearances in the past and like 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 that way because unless he was <laughs> unless he was somehow watching games before he was like conceived <laughs> like, <laughs> he was watching games from the womb <laughs> no like even before conception oh <laughs> right right I'm just curious. I'm not. I'm not laughing at, but like, there's no way you could be a a fan of like a player you never actively watched. Like, of course, that's not true. But I'm just like, really? Like, I'm curious to know how did that happen? Because I would expect, like, you know, people are like, oh, like my favorite player growing up was Sidney Crosby. Like, yeah, that makes sense. What about because you were like five say- years old when you started about- watching hockey and Crosby's on the TV? Makes sense. What, what about Gretzky, though? People, like, kids are still fan of him. They don't watch him play. I mean, but Gretzky is... is Gretzky. That, that's in a league all its own. Like, Gretzky is iconic, <laughs> like, to just knowing hockey in general. Like, okay. even people who don't even know hockey know who Gretzky is. Fair. So, um, I mean, yeah, like, you could see him, like, on the on the... Uh, on the TNT broadcast and just be like, oh, I just really love like him, his passion for the game and then get inspired to become a hockey fan. Like, I guess generally I'm just interested, like, how did that happen? Because that's not a <clears throat> typical route that you hear about. Like, you you see a player and then you're yeah. inspired by them because you actively are watching them in a game versus this guy was long retired before you were even conceived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, speaking of your Rangers, <laughs> your Rangers, first of all, my condolences. Secondly, Jacob Truba seems to always have troubles with uh, elbowing folks. But how is it that he only ever gets fined? So I don't know. I don't have an answer that for that, but <laughs> I I do love Paul Maurice's answer to um, <laughs> the news from Department of Player Safety deciding to just fine him for elbowing um, Evan Rodriguez. If you haven't seen already, Paul Maurice said, "Poor lad, poor Jake. Will he be able to eat?" <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's funny. <laughs> because it's true, though. Like, what is 5000 to Truba? He makes, I think, $8 million when I, I looked it up earlier today. Because there were some, uh, like, some random fan, uh, I saw a, a tweet, um, was talking about, like, he was looking at uh, next season, Truba's contract goes from an, uh, a full no-movement clause to a no trade clause with a with a 15 team list and they were talking about like do we trade him do we buy him out and i was kind of like i don't follow this person so i don't really know like if that's the feeling the fan base has or if it's just some random fan just saying random things because like Truba did a couple of things during uh, game six where it was like, what are, what? <laughs> like, what is, <laughs> hello, come into the play. <laughs> like, like he was doing some things and then there's generally things that he does, which I don't feel like people have a problem with. Like his elbowing, his like 
aggressive nature of playing this game. Um, but this random person that came onto my feed was talking about like, oh, do we trade him? Do we buy him out? And and I found that really strange because like y'all gave him the C like two seasons ago. Yeah. <laughs> um what an example um but um when this elbowing thing happened i think i was like watching something from like the tnt panel is it tnt no sportsnet sportsnet has kevin bxa on it and ever since bxa has been on the Sportsnet panel. I don't know how many seasons it's been already. Like, I always find myself kind of watching him and being like, sometimes he'll say things where I'm like, that's a good perspective. I like your analysis on that. Blah, blah. But always in the back of my mind, I'm like, but when you were a player, I didn't like you. And I'm trying to remember why I didn't like you. <laughs> and his analysis of Jacob Truba because people were talking about, like, should he have gotten a, a game ejection, a major? They ended up giving him two minutes for elbowing and two minutes. I think he, like, took – they. It was, already, he, it was already delayed penalty before he ended up doing the elbowing. So they gave him the additional penalty for that. So that's what it ended up being. And then, of course, with Department of Player Safety, they reviewed it and decided, oh, it's nothing. Like, you just slap on the wrist. And he was justifying why the extension of the elbow was no big deal. Because he's like, oh, I did that when I played. It's just you're trying to go in for the hit. Basically, like, let who it's it's nothing to worry about guys he's just going in for the hit he's not intentionally trying to to get rodriguez in the head with his elbow he's he's just going in for the hit guys like he's just trying to get into the and it's like uh yeah that's why i don't like you <laughs> you're just you were that that type of player and like he played and i don't know how like it's just so long ago since like he was ever relevant um but like i think he was on the canucks for a long time and then his contract was coming up or whatever it was and there was like some talk about like where he was gonna go and i want to say that the sharks were kind of like rumored or something and i was like over my dead body I do not want Kevin Bieksa on this roster. He ended up going down to like the Ducks or something. And I'm like, fine, he can stay there. But I just like, during his time, I'm like, I do not like him as a player. It's like, um, what is, what is the word I'm looking for? A sympathizer? Like a, not a. He's like, a no big deal, guys. The, <laughs> the, this, no, that's, that's a, that's a hockey play right here. And I'm like, um, I will say because that, was, um, right. He wasn't trying to elbow him. It's like, well, I mean, I can't help that he went that way. I still got to try and hit him. And it's like, just stick but, your arm out. <laughs> but then your elbow goes out towards him and it's like, yeah, but I'm just trying to hit him. It's like, but your elbow, but I'm just trying to hit him guys. <laughs> like, uh, earlier this week. I was listening to 32 Thoughts and like Elliot Freeman talked about this <laughs> and how he 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 talked about and I'm I'm probably going to get his explanation um not so accurate but he was basically uh, against how this like shouldn't be nothing like, he's like, we've got to get this out of the game. And it's like, so, you know, this chicken wing thing, like, that's that should not be a hockey play. Like, get it out. Like, cons I think he says something related to, like, consolidating it the, into it, like, elbowing being something more than what it is because of, like, this fine, basically, you know, it doesn't do anything to get this, this silly play out of the game. Like, it should not be in the game is essentially what he was, like, saying. But given how the rules are currently, yeah, like, I guess it makes sense that he get he got what ended up happening. Mm -hmm. And then they also talked about how, like, 
well the the broadcast talked about like the potential that Rodriguez was like embellishing whatever I don't know I have not seen myself when I've gotten elbowed in the head so I don't know what to tell you about whether I, like I definitely wasn't embellishing when I've had an incident where somebody like punched me in the head so my body just did what it needed to do to react so I don't know if I could say that Rodriguez was embellishing there but at the end of the day it's the chicken wing thing is stupid <laughs> yeah uh i mean yeah I, it's what more can you say than, than anything people have already said it shouldn't be in the game uh it's dumb people get injured like it's dangerous you can poke you can mess someone's eye out wait <laughs> they have visors but you know what i mean it's dangerous anyways on um happier news in the playoffs to uh, close out AAPI Heritage Month, <laughs> Jason Robertson decided to uh, entertain the Dallas fans with a hat trick. Uh, what game was that? Like game five? Game five I don't know if... Week? So, unfortunately, I think it was in Edmonton or it would have been like even more amazing. Yeah. He did the... Yeah. The crowd would have been great. But I didn't. I didn't but, catch the game. I caught a couple of highlights. I only saw the, the goal that he kind of just snuck past. Who was who was in that Skinner? Skinner. Like it, it just got right. Like it squeezed right in behind him. <laughs> Nobody was aware except for him. I was talking about how like that is such a goal scorer's goal, because. Like, when I watched the replays on that, and then they said, like, afterwards that, um, I think they were, like, when they were interviewing him, he, like, thanked the um, Dallas, like, um, goal goalie coach for helping him, like, like have the ability to, to see that type of play. Mm. Because the fact that he held on to the puck and you and when you watch the replay you can see Skinner like trying to you know one he's getting into the position and then two he's he's almost like I don't know I don't know anymore if he was like trying to reach or whatever but it's like he was trying to get into position and Robertson's looking for the openings to to become available and the moment that like Skinner put like his stick side down and I think he was like Oh, they were talking about how Skinner had his skate to the post versus, um, like, so when you're in, like, reverse R R R V H, like, you should kind of get your, the, the top of your skate, like, like, flushed around the post instead of, like, your, your skate on the post. Cause it like, it, it, um, causes a different types of openings to happen. Mm -hmm. But when you're like more secure against the post and your skate is curved inside, inside the net, I think that's a better way to explain it. Like okay. your skate is inside the net flushed against the post versus your skate is on the post. Cause that like exposes that that right. opening that Robertson saw. And that's what Skinner did. He was, his skate was on the post versus like inside of the net. And like, obviously pros are going to know that sort of stuff. But from, from the perspective of someone who maybe gets like five or six minutes of ice time a night versus someone like Robertson, who's probably clocking in like 25 minutes, like, that's like the big difference of like when you're in that situation, it's like to the average person, it's probably like, oh man, well, you know, Skinner's got it all like locked up. I guess I got to look for a pass, right? But it's like Robinson's like, no, I got this. I'm going to wait. <laughs> wait for you, wait for you to think that you get set up. And then the moment he like made that opening, he got it around from behind. Like how... How often do you see that happen where they're able to, like, you're always looking for, like, you know, when you're looking at the goalie, you're looking for, like, the top shelf, you're looking for, like, the five hole things to open up. Like, those are generally basic things to look for. But 
when you're in that close and it seems like all of the opportunities are taken away, it's like it takes that goal scorer's mentality to be like, let me wait a bit for a better chance. And that's what he did. And when he got that third goal, I was like, how? And then you obviously you have to wait for the replay. And you're like, wow. And of course, you know, like I said, he, he thanked the, the goalie coach for, you know, coaching him. And I never really thought about like goalie coaches helping the scorers, like yes. find the vulnerabilities in, in goalies, but it makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. He's like, let me show you the secrets to, sc- <laughs> to score on us. <laughs> usually, usually I'm like, nope, don't want to tell you any of my flaws. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that breakdown because uh, I don't play, <laughs> you know, like this, these are not things that I ever see or think about. Um, but it's, it's interesting being able to kind of step into that sort of mindset of what it is that the players are seeing. So yeah, that's cool. I- yeah. Like I, I will mention this real quick. I've mentioned this a little, like probably in our first season forever and a day ago. I was in a tournament and I had like a, a breakaway and someone tripped me right at the, uh, at the blue line it, entering their zone. And so I got assessed a, a penalty shot. Not that much of a score. Like if, if I were to. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid. If I if I were to um style my game against anyone, <laughs> it's definitely someone like a passer like like Joe Thorne. Like I I can see the play. It's hard for me to actually like execute the actual scoring part of it. But so to be put in that situation, I was both excited and also like I don't have anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I don't have a specialty move to go to. There's not a thing that I practice because at the end of the day, when you put me in, in a game, like it's just like deer in headlights. Most of the time you're just like, uh, just like try to make something happen. And most of my goal scoring is just, I just shot at the net and somehow it found an opening. And then I'm excited that, wow, it happened. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so I was given, the penalty shot and it was against a friend of mine who I like play in this played in the same league as so we knew each other when when we're we're both playing in net well this was the first time ever that I was seen going up against her instead of like goalie versus goalie it was now me in a skater position going against her and like I didn't have anything Except for um, the moment when I got to maybe like three feet in front of her. I was coming in to the left side because I'm a right-handed shot and my backhand's not that great. Oh, look, all of my flaws. Um, (laughs) And I'm like, well, I I might as well bank on getting some kind of opportunity on on my – on on the right side because that was the only way that I was going to be able to score and I got about three feet in front of her before so more tidbits about goalie perspective like you you are waiting for the for the skater to make the move you are not trying to make the move first unless there's a certain threshold where something like you get within three feet and from there you might want to play a little aggressive. You might want to do like a poke check. You might want to do something, but you don't want to go down too early because that takes away like your ability to, to move into the, within the crease, like um, with less effort. So you're trying to play a game of chicken with the skater. You're making them show you their shot. Yeah. And, but the fact that we're both like, I don't know what to do. Like we're not at that level. I was trying my best to hold out. I was trying not to show her anything, but really at the end of the day, it's like, I was still trying to figure out what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, and then the, thankfully she made the move first. She went down and took away her ability to, and this is what I like thought in that split second that she did that. I knew she wasn't, 
as good going laterally when she gets down on the ice. So I steered over and then got it into the open net because she was, she didn't have the ability to, to shift over anymore. And then we talked about it after the, after the game that day, there was like a tailgate for the, for the whole tournament. And I went up to, not to, not to like, not to celebrate or whatever. I just wanted you, you to ask went her strictly like, for shit talking. I I know you. No, I'm just kidding. No, I wanted no, no. I went over and I wanted to ask her. I was like, oh my god, that penalty shot was like crazy, right? And she was like, oh my god, when I saw it, it was you. And she was like, shit, it's another goalie. <laughs> because we have that mentality where we know how goalies think in that in that role, and it's like, yeah, as you get higher in the levels like you also learn about that um as a skater and whatever but when you're like starting out you're just focused on like yourself and you don't really know all of those types of like how a defenseman thinks how a forward thinks and whatever but (laughs) she was just like so she said like the fact that it was another goalie that was taking the penalty shot made her more nervous and I can see why. Like, I would be nervous if another goalie was was skating um, for the penalty shot um, just because they have that extra perspective. And I told her, I was like, I'll be honest with you. I didn't have anything. <laughs> but I said, but, you know, unfortunately, the moment you went down, you opened up an opportunity for me. And she's like, yeah, I know. The moment I went down, I was like, no, that's the wrong move. <laughs> no. And I'm like, oh. and I was like, you know, you're not supposed to make the move first. And she's like, I know I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so I was seeing everyone was like, oh, thank God you got nervous because I was like, I'm running out of real estate here. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was a, wholesome story um speaking of cute i saw this news okay so you posted this thing or shared this thing about how do you say his name is it jonas or jonas okay jonas Jonas he went to thailand and he started a hockey camp over there and for for all the little, little thai kids and he's trying to grow the sport in thailand i think that's so cool how many how many hockey players actually go abroad not in europe because i feel like that happens a lot and you're like they have their hockey established over there but you know why he's in thailand because he's he's thai isn't he yes he's swiss and thai okay so he's using his uh platform his his uh diversity representation to to grow this sport and um i don't know a whole lot about him outside of he's on the devils but i love it yeah this is like this is a great story i mean i don't see an article written about this or anything but the devils posted it not the devil sorry um amanda stein posted about this um it's this is like we love to see this kind of stuff right like we're always talking about uh growing the sport diversifying the environments around here and this is this is such a cool thing to see and the picture and i want to add that when i saw this on top of yesterday the time of this recording the the panthers advanced to the stanley cup because the rangers didn't want to show up but that's fine um the fact that yet another florida team well, I mean, they may, they they had a good run last season too, but they were talking about on the broadcast about, um, you know, the Panthers advancing like, and the countless years that the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning made it to the finals. Like, it's yet another Florida team that's that's gonna be um, competing for the cup. And then I was thinking about like, wow, you know hockey in in a in a very hot environment just like these kids in thailand loving hockey and jonas siegenthal are like growing the game in thailand it's weird isn't it how there's like hockey in hot weathered areas when supposedly 
you can't grow the game of hockey in these environments. But here we are. Forever bitter about this. <laughs> here we are. It it appears that you can. Almost like at the technology. youth level and the professional level. Almost like Amazing. there's technology for these things to happen. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that's just, it's silly. It's such a silly thing to say. Like, come up with your excuses as to why you don't want certain demographics to join the sports, but you can't use the weather as one. Like, we have a friggin' hockey team in the middle of the desert, and they are thriving. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, <laughs> another way that um, we see people growing the sport the San Jose Sharks decided to give a shout out to Sophia Cunnan, um, who is Luke Cunnan's wife. Sophia Cunnan is now a Walter Cup champion because she plays for the Minnesota team in the PWHL. They won the very first one. Um, not surprising, uh, but it's fun. I didn't, I, I didn't get to catch any of their games, but I, w- I was catching a lot of the Twitter feeds and the excitement around it. They got a shout out which love to see it such a boston hater sorry um and then and then also the twins the minnesota twins the baseball team decided to play clips of the women celebrating after they won the championship on their scoreboard and i thought that was like so it's great it's so wholesome i love what I, what are words today? I love how you know the support that we're seeing to to grow sports in different ways, specifically around women's sports these days. So I did get to watch the entirety of the the game five, um, and then prior to that, I caught the last half of game four, and it was like zero zero up until like the last what half of like the third period or like I can't remember the exact time that it happened where Minnesota was like crashing the net and there was like a shot that was made there was like a rebound that happened and it looked like oh Minnesota basically like was getting ready to to celebrate yeah but then it went to review it turned out that it ended up being goalie interference because someone like it was during um, overtime I did yeah, catch, yeah, yeah. I did was catch like, that yeah. last bit yeah, yeah. of the game, yeah. <clears throat> and that whole moment, I was just like, like, when they show the replay, I'm like, yeah, that's going to be goalie interference for sure. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that they already, like, erupted on the ice, they were, like, getting ready, like, to start taking photos. They got their helmets off and everything. I was like, oh, this is going to be so bad when it gets called back. Like, yeah. It's totally going to get called back. And of course it should, like we want it to be, you know, how I, if I were to ever have been a Boston fan, like I would have been pissed. If it's, if it's I would have been pissed if they were like, good goal. And it's like, fuck you. (laughs) Like that would have been awful for like the, and I feel like they do a much better job. And okay. The, the NHL has been doing a smidge of a better job than they have in the past with like with some of the uh, rule changes that they've made now like it seems like we're taking more time to make sure that um i think there was like a game some like i don't remember which series it was but even after they like scored they went to like review it just in case like there just seems to be like more care and i wish they would do this with things like you know a Jacob Truva elbow, but um, they seem to be doing a a little bit of a better job with like reviewing these plays. The ones that should be reviewed, like obviously we can get out of hand with like making too many things reviewable that it takes away from the flow of the game. But there's certain things like obviously with going back to the PWHL, but you don't want that to be put, you know, the, the historical moment for a first ever Walter Cup to be a blatant goalie interference. Yeah. Like that like as a, right off the top. Yeah. <laughs> like on from a Boston fan perspective, I can see just how enraged yeah. I would be. 
if that were to happen. So of course they called it back, which I'm sure Minnesota was probably like, ah, oh, damn, you know, so like we've gotten so excited, right? Only to be like, na na na, put your stuff back on. We're gonna drop the puck again. And I was thinking after that, I was like, ooh, this next goal this next goal is going to be crazy. Yeah. What happens? Like Minnesota could just come back and be like, yeah, we said it was done. (laughs) Or (laughs) like we said, it was done. Or Boston could stay alive and force a game five, which they ended up doing. And I was like, damn. It sucks so bad. Damn. As soon as that goal crossed the net, it was good. And all the players knew they flew off that ice. (laughs) It went straight to the locker room. They're like, it's done. Like, I'm sure they were pissed because of everything that had happened with with the whole goal thing prior that was called back. But that was, what a statement. (laughs) Insane. Uh, And I didn't get to catch game five, um, but I'm sure that was pretty heartbreaking for them because they couldn't score. It sucks. Woo, Minnesota. (laughs) So so Kendall Coins Gofield got the third goal. And I was thinking, how perfect is that? Got the 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 empty netter goal. Um, she was the first one to be given the Walter Cup when it was getting hoisted. I just, you know, we have a lot of love for Kendall on this on this platform because she spent some time with with the the Sharks broadcast. She's been a trailblazer for for women's uh, sports and elevated it to the next level. She was part of the. Um, the I'm like trying to think of the acronyms now and like there's been too many over the last <laughs> couple of years but you know the 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 part of the the group of women that were doing the tours to like promote the the women's side of hockey yes. and to advocate for you know more competitive level for for all these players and then, you know, better wages and like all that stuff. So not to say that, you know, the other women that make up this, this uh, league have not been doing that in, in their own, you know, way and, and, and own level, but it's just like, Kendall's been like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she's also been on the, the national team, it just, it's, it's so iconic for her to be part of of this this historical moment for you know one of the many historical moments for for the women's side of, of this sport and then i saw that she was also like talking about how you know she i don't know how but like she had given birth like less than a year ago to her uh to her kid and like Obviously, there's a lot of privilege involved as well, where she she has the resources and and finances to be able to both play this sport and and to take care of her kid. But just but with all that being said, just her talking about it, basically, you know, um, what what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, like how women are seen as like the moment you have a kid, like oh. There's a whole lot of things you can't do with your life now, yeah. like 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 how how nowadays where well, we're still hard on women, we're still hard, especially on moms about like, oh, you go to work, like what about your child? you know, like we're you know we're moving away from where women only exclusively should be like at home taking care of the children, and now we're kind of battling like allowing women to both hold hold these spaces for themselves where they can have a career, they can raise a family, they they can do all these marvelous things. And so in not so many words, she was talking about how, you know, like, you know, I can be a hockey player, I can be a mom, you know, and and like all this stuff. And it's just like so empowering, you know? And so it's like all these little things that I just loved about that moment. I think, women athletes who decide to have kids that's insane because a lot of them do come back to play and there's they're either like 
they come back just as just as strong as when they first left or better you know and it's women are badasses like i don't know what else to say about that <laughs> um yeah that's, that's pretty cool on the staying on topic with the pwhl i didn't realize how soon their draft was gonna be that's like next weekend I know. already it took me by surprise as well because they were immediately talking about it after game five and i was like what <laughs> it's like two weeks from now what do you mean <laughs> it's next week already well, I guess they don't, they don't have, it, is it because they just don't have as many things to sort of schedule around with like men's because the, the league is new? I don't understand how this works, but that should be exciting. Maybe it's just like a, they don't have as much like logistics to, to be concerned about. Yeah. I, I mean, guess. the people who'd be coming up in the draft, like people from maybe, uh, weren't part of the draft last season that spent some time away after you know the phf like folded and like maybe f- women that are coming in through the ncaa route like they're all their seasons are all ended so maybe i don't know i guess it just works out versus maybe like on the men's side they have like more logistical things to to align it with and i mean even right now we're still going through like the playoffs so yeah well so Wait, I had a question. I don't know what left. I lost it. Oh, yes, I remember. Um, <laughs> when it, the draft is basically to draft like younger players, right? Like for them. I'm assuming. Not necessarily. Or is this just because? Okay. Just anybody who wants to come in to the league, and um, yeah. But so is I, there- don't, I don't know in terms of like. If we were to compare it to the NHL, I don't know what the like. Yeah, that's what what's the confusing. Rules are off the top of my head. Like, who can just forgo the draft and just be like available as like a free agent, like how they did like in the in the in the inaugural season. Not just that, but like, do they have room for more players? Do they have like? I want to know if there are plans to make minor league teams for these bigger club teams maybe i'm sure as things continue to grow it would make sense to have the equivalent of like an ahl yeah yeah like a minor league farm type um pool so not only can you come up through that route but you can also come in through the collegiate level um so i was looking up that um Amanda Kessel um, has declared that she um, is eligible. That she, she will she will be signing up to be part of the 2024 PWHL yeah. draft. Yeah, I heard that too. But like, I don't know. This is this doesn't make sense to me. But that's fine. We'll figure it out as as it goes. Um, but I guess that uh, New York, New York has the number one overall pick. Which is fun. That's both of our I teams. Think New York. I think New York finished last in the standings. So that sounds familiar. We have we have so much in common. Both teal teams. Okay, so I saw a post earlier this week where they were auctioning off the the player worn jerseys for for New York, and. I'm not big on on getting player worn stuff. It's not like you know at the top of my like you know collector want yeah. list or whatever. But I thought like what the hell, we'll just try it, right? I I went and found Abby's Abby's jersey. For some reason, she wears like 52, which I'm like that sounds jimongous. <laughs> or but you know whatever fine you know be cool to like hang it in my bedroom or whatever i don't want it that bad because i put in my bid and it and already shot up like it i put in my max and the person who bid before me i guess had a higher max and i was like yeah i'm fine <laughs> yeah. like it just you know it's it's how i it's how i approach most things <laughs> is how much do i want this because there's very few things I will impulse buy because I will have huge buyer's remorse. 
like it will plague over me and something about the something about getting a jersey that I most likely not be able to wear given that it's size 52 I don't understand how that's possible that she wears a size 52 but I guess with all the gear maybe but even then that still sounds so big maybe it's like a maybe I'm thinking of a different manufacturer maybe it's not maybe it's different but anyways in not so many words the higher that that price would have gone, the more anxious I would have gotten about investing more money in something that, like, <laughs> I'm probably not going to be able to wear. It's just going to sit on my wall what, and is, not do anything. Is the reward <laughs> worth your sanity? You know? <laughs> I would look at it every morning and just be like, man, what did you do? <laughs> like, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have felt good anymore. Like, I, I you know, I took a chance. Look like someone wanted it more with me, and I'm like, you can have it. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. You can have it. I will wait. I will wait until they finally come out with their no. identities, yeah. the logos next season, and I will buy uh, an Abbey Rock jersey. But that particular player won one. There, there, there was a max in it for me. <laughs> I feel that. That's it's a big chunk of money. I don't understand how people are okay with spending such big chunks and like just for one thing but that's that's neither here or there i i haven't i haven't done that myself um but yeah the the draft I, it's i don't i don't know enough women players i don't know which exciting players there are coming out like who qualifies to be from, uh first overall or anything but well, we're excited anyways. <laughs> so you know who was the first overall pick for this previous draft? Uh, I don't remember, but I think Minnesota had her. Taylor Heisey. Okay. And she's on Minnesota. How, how, how big of a role did she play this season? Do you know? She was big. Pretty, pretty decent role. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to... I'm Like, I know it's been said already who's most likely to go first overall for this upcoming draft. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find the name real quick. Uh, it's not showing up, but I'm sure I'm going to see it later and be like, yeah, that person. <laughs> but there's already someone who's being like toted as like the first overall. So it's going to be an exciting time yeah. with, you know, the Sharks getting the first overall. New York's going to get the first overall. They both teams definitely need it. Yeah. Which is so sad. I feel like New York started off really strong uh, when the season started. And then they kind of just, pew. But it's, I mean, it's only five other teams are playing. So, like, <laughs> you got to be on top of your game. But definitely that that game five. I think that's a much better ending than if that goalie interference uh, situation would have been a different, would have gone in a different direction. Like this is a much better ending for the first ever Walter Cup finals. Yes. It, uh, I agree. <sighs> okay. Lastly, happy Pride Month, by the way. What is this little thingy thing about Adele that you uh, found? Did this pop up on your feed randomly, or do you actually follow pop? Yeah, first? so this popped up randomly on my feed, and, you know, as we enter this Pride Month, um, I feel like for, for folks who support the queer community and want to, like, just saying that you support queer folks is, is nice, but it's not the enough. ability to to grow and to to learn about the things that we go through and how you can become a, a better ally. We're not asking you to like, you know, like every every like little law or or whatever that gets popped up, you need to be like the front row of everything. You need to like you don't need to do that. Like there's a lot of us who are like exhausted by all this stuff that we're not even sitting in the front row like we're finding ways that we can kind of raise awareness and do it in in a way that um allows us to maintain our like our mental health levels and every and and stuff like that so when i say like 
growing and finding ways to like um become a better ally i'm just talking about things where this this situation um during adele's i guess she had a concert i don't know where it was it's just like this clip that popped up where the tweet says adele goes off on an audience member who yelled pride sucks at her concert tonight and in her response she I guess she was singing and someone had said that and she stopped singing and she said, did you come on my fucking show and just say that pride sucks? Are you fucking stupid? Don't be so fucking ridiculous. You have nothing nice to say. Shut up. All right. <laughs> like it's just calling out someone. It doesn't have to be like in that tone unless you feel that that, you know, like by all means, if you're enraged, be enraged. <laughs> but um. It's just, you know, if you see something and you feel comfortable enough in that your own personal safety is not going to be affected, and if you're feeling, you know, okay in that moment, even simple as someone, you know, like if it's if it's um uh, someone you're familiar with, like I would say if anything, that's probably like maybe a better route to take if you're uncertain about your comfort level versus talking to a random somebody that you don't know how things are going to go yeah. but at whatever makes you most comfortable to help out just call something out if someone you know is is doing something that you feel like hey xyz here's the reasons why volleyball <laughs> like However, however you feel most comfortable going about just raising awareness and educating other folks around you. Obviously, this is a bit more of like in your face, <laughs> but I mean, I'm here for it because they it's, interrupted it, her concert. It, it is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, she's she's annoyed that this random person's yelling that out. She thinks it's stupid because obviously it, it is. is stupid. <laughs> And she's just like, please just fucking shut up. Yeah. It's like, yes, Adele. Yes. Speak all in <laughs> it. I think this is a really good example of solidarity, right? Uh, I feel like there are too many people who say, oh, yeah, I'm an ally. But the only thing they do is not hate queer folks. <laughs> it's like, I love that you are supportive of us and things like that. But if you... Like, let's take, for example, if you've got, like, a sibling or maybe a relative and you're like, oh, I'm supportive of them. I have no hate towards them. But you kind of allow other folks around you to bully them, put them down and allow and do all the things that you're saying that should not happen to them. If you allow that to happen, it's like, but are you really being, like an ally and supportive like they you know like again i go back to yes i want to take into account other people's safety i don't want you to put yourself in harm's way to do certain things or say certain things to you know justify yourself as an ally but if it is in an environment where it's like maybe a relative or a close friend is saying something and as much as you say oh i would never say that stuff to them and things like that but you allow it to happen like i encourage you to find in the way that is most comfortable for you to approach the con the the conversation and be like hey xyz yeah like that's all we're trying to say yeah. we're not saying <laughs> go pick up a microphone and go yell it on a stage to thousands of people. We're not asking you to we're do that for the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not asking you to be Adele, but be Adele within your own <laughs> home <laughs> amongst your own friends, you know? Yeah. I mean, this applies. that's all we're asking you to do. This applies to all issues. If you're comfortable enough to speak up, mm -hmm. sometimes it's okay to be uncomfortable to speak up as long as you're not putting your safety at risk, like you said. But sometimes it is necessary to speak up when you are uncomfortable and when the other person is uncomfortable. You can't make change 
unless there's some discomfort there, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's Pride Month. I want to focus on some some happy news this this month, if possible. This is I I would consider this good news because it's a it's a good example of of true allyship. She some dummy decided to interrupt her show like like that was a good idea to begin with <laughs> the thing he yelled out sucked and she called him out for it and now he's this person's embarrassed like <laughs> what did you think was gonna come out of this yeah people it's 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 been hard out here let's let's try to lift each other up and not be so negative my goodness and one other thing that came to mind that i shared just before we hopped on on our uh I shared it on our Instagram stories is a, um, is shoot. What is her name? Meg. Yeah. Meg, who is oh, yes. infamous for the protect trans kids, um, merch. And they have a, a, a whole bunch of other, um, merch that is for the queer community. They put out a, um, reel that basic, uh, the, their infamous, Merch, as I said, that says protect trans kids with, with the flag behind it, apparently was used and posted like on Walmart's uh, website or something. And it's since been taken down, but I guess it has popped up on some other big company uh, websites or whatever, basically stealing these designs from from small business businesses owned by by queer folks and as we enter this pride month it's kind of like rainbow capitalism <laughs> pisses me off yeah <laughs> so basically they were talking about they were raising awareness that this happened and they were also saying hey you know for pride related stuff encouraging people to please support Small business, small businesses do not go to these big companies because as much as they say, hey, we support queer folks, blah, blah, blah whatever, no, you, don't. you can only kind of take it with a grain of salt. You know, at the end of the day that it, it's just an angle to to make money. And so it's really hard to feel like comfortable with just blind like it's nice sometimes you see some really nice stuff and it's not and i'm not saying that i haven't bought some of that nice stuff but it's like also you know it's still even though they platform some um some lgbtq you know designers it's still at the end of the day we really do encourage folks to go right to the source almost every person who's got a, a small business has some kind of website where they you can purchase directly from them. In particular with Meg, um, they've got their own website. If you've seen this this merch before, go directly to the source. Support queer folks directly. Do not go through these big companies because you don't know all the ins and outs that are, you know, going on behind the scenes. But a thousand percent if you are or if you are Supporting small businesses owned by LGBTQ folks and who do not use AI. <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> like, that is the best way if you want to put your money somewhere to give back to the queer community, go to directly to the source. Yes, I concur. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, you did remind me, uh, speaking of giving back, our, our friend Elena, if you guys have not seen uh, posts on the interwebs already, uh, we did a little collab. She made a couple of stickers to to, to put out, to sell to y'all, but um, she's going to be donating funds to the Trevor Project this month. So if you guys want to go ahead and grab some stickers, donate to a great cause, I'm sure the link is in her bio on her socials and things. So head on over there. She. She always makes cute art. I always like her stuff. And it's going to a great cause. Support your queers. <laughs> and if you don't really want any merch, you can, again, just go directly to the source. You could donate a couple of bucks to your local uh, nonprofit, um, LGBTQ um, community center, or any of these, you know, uh, 
bigger platforms that do other things um, to a, to a broader scale to help out the community. Like these are all great ways for for you to do that during Pride and and beyond Pride. You can celebrate and uplift the queer community beyond June. <laughs> true, true, true. I did want to throw in another thing. Um, it's not Pride specific, but it's donating to a good cause. As we all know, the world is on fire and very depressing. Me wearing my kafia. Um, there's this uh, organization called Operation Olive Branch, I think, if you guys are interested in donating to Palestinian causes, uh, helping families and people who are trying to get out of Gaza uh, while all of that chaos is happening. That's also a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to be price specific, but it is, you know, something that, that's very important happening. So, yeah, just wanted to throw that out. It can be indirectly pride specific because queer people are everywhere. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said it's not pride specific, but mm -hmm. it's all interconnected. I, Do a two for one. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> it's a lot going on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we have for this week. Unless you had some last minute thoughts, questions, concerns interested in finally getting to all these drafts and getting like i'm starved for signings i want to know what this team is gonna look like <laughs> next season yeah my i'm like thirsting for it yeah yeah we're all waiting we're all waiting for mike greer to say the san jose sharks proudly pick <laughs> mac mccellarini <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Are you gonna go? And it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. What what's gonna happen with the fourteenth overall? <laughs> <laughs> um, like we already knew that was happening. Are you gonna go to the yeah, watch yeah, party? Yeah, yeah, Move it along. What watch party? The sharks are gonna be holding. At, a... Is there one at SAP? I don't know if it's at SAP. I just I did see something going around that they're probably gonna do some sort of draft watch party. <laughs> it's it's not on my like to do list. Okay, I was just asking. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll be able to watch. Oh, but I. But unrelated to the Sharks, but related to Pride, um, what perfect timing. And I want to say that they planned this because that's just, you know, I just love a good story. Um, the U.S. women's national team for, for soccer had a friendly against Korea and they sported their new progress jersey that's got the numbers in rainbow. And that was just lovely to watch on my TV yesterday for the for the first day of, of Pride Month. <laughs> um, and I really want one, but my dilemma is I don't currently have like a favorite player like that's above the crop. Like I I love the team, mm -hmm. but I'm Buy like, them all. who do I get? <laughs> who do I get? Um, and additionally, I think whoever I get, I kind of want them to be queer. Right. That would make sense. Like, like my most recent one that I got was Megan Rapino because obviously. Yeah. Is she queer? So. <laughs> just kidding. Is she breaking news? <laughs> Megan Rapino is gay. <laughs> She's gay, Marcus. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> no, her and Sue Bird are just really good friends. Gal pals. And they were roommates, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just really good friends um but yeah i'm I, I i try to look up i'm like who's gay on this roster <laughs> who's the new gay um but i don't know so i really want one but do i just get one without a person on it i don't know I'm very big into getting the personalized jersey, so that's why I'm like, no, but I, obviously I need to get somebody. Yeah, that makes I don't sense. Know like, I, why not? <laughs> like, you just have a blank jersey. Like with hockey jerseys, I understand because then people are moving all over the place. But soccer, I feel like the the way the layout is, if you don't get a number on the back, it's just a big ad. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so hopefully someone can reveal themselves soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be celebrating. We've got so many 
We've got so many, like this, this, this squad is younger, which is exciting. Like all these new exciting things happening, like the Sharks, the, the, the New York team for the PWHL, the, you know, the, the women's national soccer team uh, for the upcoming Olympics. Ooh, that's going to be exciting. The Olympics. So many exciting things coming about. Extra points if, if it's Anyways. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Well, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for uh, listening, liking, sharing, or whatever. Join us next week. I'm Ness. I'm Jay. Bye. Bye.